I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Akakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect, Shalom Labahariam. All right, and Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Bahashem, which means in the name of Yahweh Shai, is the name of the only begotten Son who was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their sins. Bahashem Rakakwadash means in the name of the Holy Spirit, which is the volume of the book, the Spirit of Truth. Shalom, Labaharyam, peace to the elect. That's the men, women, and children whose names are written in the book of life. Huh. Good video right there. <clears throat> All right. Whose names are written in the book of life, who's ordained to be delivered in these last days. All right, out of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right, starting with those particular people. And you have the scattered abroad throughout the different nations on the earth who will hear this word and come into the fold and follow the land whithersoever he goeth. <clears throat> I was watching this video by the elder brother Hawad in the news. You know, um, and, uh, you know, this, this elder brother is, uh, very animated, you know, he has a, a lively spirit, you know, and, um, I was listening to the video. I got into about 22 minutes and, uh, kind of chuckle. You kind of laugh at some of the things that he says, but there was a point. Where he quoted, he quoted uh, Psalms 34 and 11, okay? I don't know if he brought it out later on, but when I heard this, all the laughs stopped, okay? Because what we're into is very serious. What we're into is... <laughs> We're into the of the fear of the Lord, man. We're into the word of the Lord, which should put fear in you. Okay? If you don't get if you watch these videos and the fear of the Lord don't come upon you, then the Holy Spirit's not working with you. Okay? As this scripture reads, Psalm 34 and 11, come ye children. Who's the children? The children of Israel. You so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you believers out there. All right, you believe on this word, you need to listen or hearken unto me. All right. Hey, the scriptures tell you that the, the tabernacles of David, okay, or the house of David is going to be re uh, resurrected in these last days. So this is David saying this, but we speak the same things that David spoke. Because we bring forth the volume of the book. Yahweh Shai is a man to be feared. The men of the Lord, the prophets were men to be feared. So if you're taking this thing for light, then the spirit ain't... Again, I quoted it earlier. The scripture says what? They shall follow the land whithersoever he goeth. The scripture also tell you, he said what? Yahweh Shai said, my sheep shall hear my voice. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. This is John 10. He said it three times in this chapter. Beautiful. In John 10 and 3. All right. To, to, the, to him, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Right, because the fear of the Lord would drive you to repentance. Okay, this I want to see what that word for voice is. A sound, a tone. You know, which ultimately, you know, what it represents? It represents the emotion behind the words that we speak, the intent. Behind the words that we speak, because one man can say one thing, 
the excuse me one man could say the same thing and another man could say and repeat the same words but it hits different why because the spirit is working with one man but the spirit may not be when i say man i'm talking about maybe it might be from a christian pat the christians they could read particular script like for instance when it's christians when we went to church we when we went to church sunday school right they read the bible they quoted the scriptures but it didn't it didn't convict us why because the holy spirit is not with those pastors and those teachers within the confines of Roman Catholicism as we know it today, which is called the Christian church. Because the Christian church is nothing but under the umbrella of Roman Catholicism. It says a sound, a tone of inanimated things as musical instruments, right? When you, like for instance, the scriptures talk about a, uh, damn, the the tinkling symbol. When you hear certain instruments, oh, the scriptures talk about a certain sound from the trumpet. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. I want to come back. I want to go too far off. Certain sound. Yeah, what's well, all still revolves around the same thing because the certain sound <clears throat> should bring you to fear. First Corinthians 14 and 8. All right, let me see it. Ooh. Let me start at verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? Okay, those, the prophesying, the doctrine, okay, the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai should bring you to fear, should bring you to subjection. And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, different instruments, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? Okay, you got people that play the guitar, right? That are, you know, they're, they're, they're good with the guitar, but when Jimi Hendrix come on at the guitar, it attracts the people differently. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Okay, so there's a certain sound, there's a certain uh, symbol that the word of the Lord gives, gives off when it's incorporated with the Holy Spirit. All right, there's a certain vibration that the Holy Spirit gives off. Okay, so likewise ye, except ye utter, right, meaning speak, by the tongue, words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, there are, it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, how I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Meaning we won't be able to understand one another. Okay? Even so, ye, for as much as are as ye are zealous of the of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. The edifying is what? The building up, the exhortation which is through admonishment. The scriptures tell you that what? <clears throat> All skip, scripture was given for inspiration, for reproof, for doctrine, all right, for correction, which leads to what? The fear of the Lord coming upon you to make you repent. Okay? All right? So going back, this is the voice that is explained that Yahweh Shai, you know, push forth. It says a sound, a tone of animation things as musical instruments, a voice of the sound of or uttered words, speech, a language, tongue. Okay? 
That's when the men of the Lord are on the scene and are promoting the words of life, right? There should be a, a certain, you know, intimidation that comes upon you, okay? And that's what the Christian church don't, they don't push that. Everything is lollipops and flowers and tulips and, you know, a, it, it's a, a, a too much comfort, okay? Let me read this real quick. This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be fulfilled. All right. I remember the elder Monaghan used to always bring this out. That's how I remember. When you go into this word compel, when we go on the highways and hedges, this ain't to, 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 to uh, 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 wipe your tears or to, you know, pat you on the back. Okay, the word of the Lord, it says what? To, when we compel you, it says to necessitate, meaning you need to get your house in order. You need to get yourself in order. Compel, drive to, constrain. Let's look at that word constrain real quick. Compel or force to follow a particular course of action. All right. Yahweh Bashim Yashah is not axing. Okay? Yahweh Bashim Yashah is telling you that you need to follow suit or be put to death. That's the message. It says by force, key word here, threats. <laughs> All right? Yeah, that skit with Cedric the Entertainer, Jay-Z, the Blackout album, threats. My name, threats. All right? Threats. All right, this ain't a, hey, the promise of the, the covenant comes with threats, man. All right, the fear of the Lord, man. Okay? By permission, entreaties, all right, et cetera, by other means. Okay? So, let's go back. The book of Psalms 34 and 11. I'm going to read it again. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not broadcast on mainstream media, in colleges. Your, your grandmammy with that 14 by 22 Bible that she got on her in table, just collecting dust with the bookmark on Psalms 23. Okay? We didn't learn to fear the Lord, man. All right? When, until we came into the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in its entirety, that's when we learned to fear the Lord. That's when we learned to get right. That's when we learned the true brotherly love. Okay? Because there's consequence without showing brotherly love. The Christians don't understand that there is mercy and love in the law. Okay? And if you don't show mercy and love in the law, then it's con then the, then the, then that fear that you despised, okay? That power, that force that you despise is going to come upon you with great wrath. Back then it was during the, uh, 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 by the hands of men, but now it's, it's by the, the spirit of the word of the Lord. And then it will come through fire and brimstone. Okay? So, I think I got one more and I'm going to close. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 
Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, all right, we persuade men. Let's look at that word terror real quick. This what compels us. This what moves us. The men, you know, the, of the hopeful elect that go out on the highways and hedges week after week to go and teach the word. The terror of the Lord, men. Fear, dread, terror. That which strikes terror, reverence, which means fear for one's husband. Oh, that's beautiful. Why? Because what did Paul say? I presented you as a chaste virgin. Okay? Just as in ancient times, a man will raise his daughter in the fear of other men. So when he were to marry her off, she would have the humility that a man that wanted to marry her would desire. A lot that's the problem with these women. I mean, that's the spirit, man. A lot of these women out here don't have humility, so men don't want to deal with you. Okay? The most high is going to be reconciled with the children of Israel because of the humility of the elect. The fear that the elect have. The women nowadays don't fear the men. That's the problem. There's no fear in the men of the men of Israel today. But that fear will come. All right? I'm going to close on that, man. Call Lord Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Akakwadash. Shalom.